championship has finally yeah. reached the finals. There are only two players remaining in the tournament. One is Chris Jesus Ferguson. He's been here twice before. He's finished second. We'll see if this time he can take it down. He's going to be going up against Andy Black, who has also cast in this event before, but has never made it to the finals. <laughs> this is my third try at the finals. Uh, second the, the first two years, so hopefully I'll be able to pull one of these out for a victory. So you're going up against Andy Block. What do you think of that? Uh, Andy Block and I are really good friends. We actually play golf all the time together. Oh, really? Yeah, so, it's, uh, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Andy, you're on your way down. You're late for the finals to take on Chris Ferguson. Are you excited about it? Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, it, it, it's really such a rush right now that the, uh, the way that the, the filming show goes, I don't even really have enough time to like let it sink in. <laughs> Which, I, which is probably a good thing because, you know, there's no time to really get nervous. You just got to go out there and play poker. And, you know, I've known Chris for a long time. And, you know, I, I, we've played a lot of poker and, and matches. And, you know, I play golf with him a couple That's times a week. That's Chris he plays more golf with you than poker. Well, yeah, we probably play a lot more well, now. And we've definitely played more golf and poker together. And um, so this is going to be a lot of fun. The strange thing is we play more golf together than we do poker together. Uh, but I do know a lot about Andy's game. Uh, he's played a lot on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, I know. And the other thing is he's a very mathematical, uh, he's very mathematical in, in his, his approach to poker and more similar in that sense. And it's, here's kind of an interesting story, is back in 95, you know, I was just starting out. I was a nobody in poker. You know, you know, I was just starting out to play the mid and, and larger size tournaments. Nobody knew who I was. Yeah. I hadn't won anything. And I had a couple friends who were top top poker players. And I did some really, really good mathematical analysis, particularly on the heads-up game. All right. And I had this mathematical analysis, and I'd, I'd talk to these top-notch players. And I, I'd, I'd watch them play, and they, I could see that they're making mistakes in these situations, really, really big mathematical mistakes. Mathematical mistakes? Mathematical mistakes that I can prove, hey, this is a better That's way. This is, this is the wrong thing to do. Here's the way you have to play this hand. And I showed it to these guys, and they kind of—they basically just—they kind of scoffed at it. In other words, they—they they kind of understood that it was that I could show it was the right thing to do, but they thought they had something. They thought better. they were right. They thought they had something better too. So I'd watch these guys make these mistakes, and really, that's when I knew that you know someday I'd be able to beat these guys because I had something that they they didn't have, and I had something that they don't have. And they weren't even willing to believe in and, it at and, that point, which is very strange. Now here's here's the interesting thing is that. One time, I was playing a tournament with Andy Block. This, this is pretty much one of the first times we met. I knew I knew of him, mm -hmm. but this is one of the first times we met. We went to dinner, and I showed I showed my analysis to him, and something I'd spent months on. I'd spent like six, nine months on his analysis. I showed my analysis to him. He had done the exact same analysis wow. that I had done. Uh, you know, I was, so he I was not shocked. only believed in it, but understood it. He understood it. He he'd done the exact same analysis himself. I was I was completely blown away. Kindred and, spirits. Very much, and we've—I mean, we've been friends ever since. Uh, we'll be friends after this, uh, and I don't. The thing is, I don't think it's a coincidence that we're both both made uh, the final table in this championship. Event. You know, I think it's pretty evenly matched. I don't. I wouldn't you have a want to predict anything. To the game, no? We have a very similar approach, um, and you know, it's tough because you know a lot of these other players. I can like talk to other people and say, okay, what do you think about their game? What what can I do to go and take advantage of them? And there's really no one I can talk to other than myself about Chris. You know, there's no, I can't go on like, you know, like, you know, tell what do you think about, you know, or, you know, or somebody that he played, he just played and he lost to. Like I could for almost every other match. Up till now, I had inside information or, you know, a couple of matches, I went yeah. back and looked at film. I, you know, I can do that all day against Chris. You want to help? So do you think playing golf with him has helped you maybe know a little bit more about him? You'll be able to use any of that to your advantage? I don't, I don't think that will help. No? No. One thing about Andy. Andy Block is, I've, I've for a long time said he's one of the most underrated players out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, well, here's one of his coming out. He came in second in the, uh, the horse, in the horse event, which is a huge event uh, yeah. at the World Series. Hopefully he'll come in second again. Card Player TV will be here at Caesar to let you know who's the 2008 NBC Heads Up Poker Champion. I'm Lizzie Harrison for Card Player TV.